Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lisa Bug Yoga. And I am teaching here from Orlando, Florida, and our internet is up and good to go. So thanks for your patience last week. If you were with me, um, we had some technical difficulties. If you missed class, I did upload it to YouTube. So be sure to go back and check that class out for Lisa Bug Mind Body Blend. Also, just a reminder that there is no um, Aging Strong class tomorrow if you usually join me and no classes next week as I'm making my way back to Minnesota. So we are going to focus today on both strengthening and releasing tight shoulders. And as most of us realize, as we age or even the amount of time that we spend over our devices, we start to get this rounding in our upper back and shoulders. And I'm seeing it in myself as well. It's been interesting now that I've been teaching these online classes and watching my posture, I'm noticing I'm getting this rolling in of the shoulders. So we're going to work on rolling that back out, stretching these tight areas, and strengthening our shoulders, mostly through stabilization exercises. So things like planks, where we're holding ourselves up in a, in a strong, solid position through our shoulders. You will need today a yoga block and a strap if you have those. And we are going to start standing on your mat. And we are going to go through some of the um, kinesiology positions of the movement of our shoulders or the biomechanics of our shoulders. So standing in mountain pose, either with your feet tight together or hips distance apart, if we turn the palms forward and stand as tall as we can, this position in Western terms is known as the anatomical position. So every movement that we have in our body starts right from here. And then we name it depending on where we're moving our joints. So if we're focusing on our shoulders today, our shoulders are externally rotated. And our rotator cuff is responsible for keeping the shoulders rotated out or rotating them in. So we'll just work on this internal and external rotation of the humerus, which is this upper bone of the arm. So as you take your hands, rotate in and rotate your whole arm in. Now notice I can just turn my hand without rotating my shoulder. So it's not about what the forearm is doing. It's about what the shoulder is doing. And then rotate out and rotate in and rotate out. So we're just going to start to warm up through this easy and gentle movement. And notice when we rotate in, this is a position we spend a lot of time in over our devices. So this causes our shoulders to roll forward. So I want you to emphasize the rotating out. And we'll put this in with the breath. So as you rotate in, inhale, as you rotate out, exhale. And feel the muscles that you're using to cause this rotation to happen right in the upper back, through the shoulder blades, backs of the shoulders. And one more time, finishing in the anatomical position. So this is internal and external rotation of the shoulder. Now if we move the arms forward, and up as high as you feel comfortable, this is called flexion of the shoulder. We bring it back down, it's extension of the shoulder. If we go behind the anatomical position, this is hyperextension. So I want you to move from maximum flexion to maximum hyperextension. And sometimes the word hyperextension sounds like it's a bad thing. But it's not because the shoulder can move through this nice full range of motion. If we were talking about the knee joint, we would not want to do hyperextension of the knee because it's not intended to go through that range of motion. Now with the breath, inhale, reach. Exhale, back and squeeze those shoulder blades. Maximum flexion. Maximum hyperextension. Let's do one more. And then come back to the anatomical position where we began. Now, if we take the arms out 
and bring them all the way up. This is called abduction. If we take them down, adduction. And I want you to keep your palms forward like you're in the anatomical position. Sweep out and up. Inhale. Down. Exhale. And you can even bring them a little bit further across the front of your body if you'd like. Abduction. We're moving away from the midline. Adduction. We're moving toward. With the breath. In. And out. Now I'm keeping the palms facing forward because that's keeping the shoulder blades rolling into that lateral rotation. So we're not rounding our, rounding our shoulders in. If we turn our palms towards us, there's more of an opportunity to lose that nice posture. One more time. Back to the anatomical position. So we move along planes of motion when we move through this, these joint patterns with our shoulders. So if we take our arms up, right at about horizontal, this is a, called the horizontal plane. So as we move the arms together, this is adduction, adduction. We're coming towards the midline. As we go back, it's abduction. We're coming away from the midline. So let's see what our comfortable range of motion is. Opening and closing. And if you want, you can even crisscross so you can find more range of motion in the front of you into that adduction. And we'll breathe in as we open. Breathe out as we close and cross. And I want you to feel the chest muscles really expanding as you open, getting a nice stretch through the pecs. And as you cross the hands in front, Allow your shoulder blades to slightly drift apart to feel a little stretch there. Now, the next time we open, take a big breath in. Cross the right arm over the left as you close. And then you can either hug here or wrap the hands into eagle arm position. Now, let's start to warm up through the legs a little bit. So holding your eagle or your arm wrap, sink down into chair and rise up. Feet can be tight together, that classical form of yoga, or hips distance apart. And if we add the breath here, let's inhale as we come up. Exhale to sink into your chair. Now all the while we're getting a fantastic stretch through the upper back, up into the neck, slightly the backs of the shoulders. And one more repetition. Inhale coming up. Exhale sinking down. Hold your chair pose. Now one at a time, lift a heel off the mat. So I'm holding chair. Right heel comes up. It sinks down. Left heel comes up. Remember, this is okay, too, for the arm wrap here. And we're shifting our body weight from one foot into the other, into the ball of the other. A little bit of stretch through your feet and your toes. One more each side. Great. Hold. Come up. Unwrap the arm cross, open out into horizontal abduction. Cross the left arm over. Take your arm hug or wrap into eagle. Good. So now we'll step the feet wider. So instead of dropping down into chair pose, we'll inhale here. Exhale, sink into a baby goddess squat. And my toes are turned out. The knees are tracking nicely over the toes here. And make sure this feels comfortable for your shoulders. It should feel like a wonderful stretch. Wonderful good morning release. Breathe in. Breathe out. And you're going at your own pace as always with your yoga practice modifying any movements that you need to for your body today. One more repetition. And hold your squat. Lift one heel. 
and lower. Lift the other heel. So my goal here is to try to keep my pelvis stable as I'm lifting and lowering, warming up the ankles. So I'm not rocking my body weight to one side and then to the other. And you're as low as you feel comfortable, go, comfortable going here in this goddess squat. Very nice. One more on each leg. Hold that goddess squat. Exhale to come up. Unwrap the arms, open out into horizontal abduction. Lower your arms back down by your side. So I'm going to turn to this side. So for me, it's my left, but facing you on the camera, it's going to be right. So I'm going to turn into a warrior one. So my back foot slightly turned in. My body is facing that top edge of the mat. I'm going to place my right hand on my hip, lifting the left arm, stretch up and back. And again, this is our shoulder flexion and shoulder hyperextension. And I have my palm facing in, my thumb goes up, and my pinky goes back. So we're going to start to add a little bit of a change with this movement. So as you lift the arm up, hold it, turn your palm to face behind you and tap your spine anywhere along your back here. Then straighten your arm back up, lower your arm, take it behind you, turn your palm to face away from your body, and then bring the back of your hand to tap your lower back, anywhere this feels comfortable. So I've got myself in a little bit of a, a hammerlock wrap here. So I'm going from straighten that arm, lift up, tap your back behind you, Reach it up, sweep it back, and reach the back of your hand. So I'm going to see how far I can tap down my back from this upwards position, and then how far I can reach up my back with my thumb from the bottom. And you want to make this feel comfortable, so I don't want you to feel any pain with this by over straining your muscles here. So what we're doing is coming in and out of half cow face position with the arm. Next piece, as that arm lifts, bring it behind you and take a baby back bend. So I'm going to extend my spine and look up. Then come back to center. As you reach behind you, tilt your head away from the arm that's wrapped back. So dropping the shoulder towards the opposite, or dropping the ear towards the opposite shoulder. And let's go through these movements. Stretch up, back bend, come up, wrap behind you, tilt the ear. Notice this great stretch right here through the upper trapezius. And let's do this twice more on this side. Inhale, reach up, back bend. Exhale, reach behind, tip the head. One more. Up and wrap it behind you, tip the head, and come back to neutral. Both hands on the hips, straighten out your front leg, and we'll tip forward into a dynamic moving pyramid pose. So you're going to come down and pull yourself back up. Now the arms here can stay at the hips if you'd like, or we can move the arms through shoulder flexion and hyperextension. So as I go forward, I'm lifting the arms out, thumbs up. As I go back, I'm reaching out behind and opening up the chest. And I'm using both arms to do this movement and feeling a nice stretch down the back of that extended forward leg. Now it's up to you where you'd like to put the inhales and the exhales here, but traditionally in yoga, you exhale as your body becomes smaller. So as I'm coming forward, that's gonna be my exhalation. 
and my inhale happens when my body's really expanded. Working on a little bit of balance. One more repetition. And then come into your pyramid and hold. Now here, you can use various props if you need to support your fingertips. You can place them on a chair in front of you. Come down to the shin using your block. Or if you have that flexibility, you can bring your fingertips all the way down to the mat and take a wonderful stretch here. Now I like to do pyramid with a straight back position, more of a neutral spine, but you can also slightly round your back if that feels a little bit better for you. Coming down a little bit further, just be careful that you're not over rounding your back. Let's take one more breath here. Then we can bring the hands back to the hips, soften and bend the front knee, push through your foot and come up. So we'll pivot around to face the opposite direction for your warrior one. So I am facing the camera, I'm gonna call this front foot my left, even though it's my right, so I'm mirroring you. So hand to the hip, the back leg arm reaches up and back. So we'll start it with the straight arm and just notice what is a good range of motion for you in this movement. And I'm wanting to be sure I'm not swinging my arm. It's not about swinging it and getting momentum. I'm reaching long and placing it into that maximum shoulder flexion and hyperextension. With the breath, inhale up, exhale back. Let's add the next piece. So as you reach up, bend your elbow, just touch your spine behind you, see where you can touch, and then bring it back behind, turn the back of your hand towards your back and reach up as far as you can up your back. Inhale, stretch up, touch, we're stretching that tricep a little bit, and then reach back. We're stretching through the shoulder and our rotator cuff. Now, if you've had rotator cuff injuries, I want you to be really careful with this reaching behind your back. You don't have to come up super high. Just do it moderately. Abdominals are zipped up. Let's add the next piece. Add your back bend as the arm comes up extend and then as you come reach behind you're tipping the ear towards the shoulder so we're opening up this upper trap with the breath and extend the spine now when you're back bending keep your abdominals engaged you don't have to go really far back you can just make it a nice baby back bend what the back bend does is it opens up the hip flexor on that back leg a little bit more. Another area we tend to be super tight. Breathing, breathing. Let's take one more. Reaching behind, tipping the head and coming center, both hands to hips. Straighten out the front leg. Dynamic moving pyramid pose. So my spine's going to stay neutral as I just tip forward, like I'm taking a little bow until I feel this stretch down the back of that leg and then come back up. Option to add the arms, sweeping both arms forward into shoulder flexion. And as you come up, bring the arms back into hyperextension of the shoulders. And then if that breath flow feels good for you to inhale as your arms come back, exhale to reach forward, that's great. Maybe coming down a little bit deeper on each one to see where your edge is in that stretch. Two more repetitions.
And one more. And we'll hold our pyramid on this last one using whatever props that you need to support yourself here. Stretching down and enjoy this beautiful hamstring stretch. And just notice the sensations that you're feeling. You know, I feel actually a little bit in my lower back, so I want to be mindful of that and keep my abdominals engaged to protect that lumbar spinal region. And keep the breath moving. And then as we prepare to rise, bend your front knee a little bit. That'll help you from locking it out as you come up. Hands can come to the hips and press yourself all the way up. And then we'll pivot both feet forward. We're back into our goddess squat position. Sink down into the legs. Keep the abs in nice and tight. And we are going to circle the arms around and as we come down, reach down towards the ground. Inhale and exhale. Now we can rise up with the legs and drop down as we reach down to the ground. So my shoulders here are doing a little bit of a circular action. In our kinesiology terms, it's called circumduction. And our spine is doing a little bit of circumduction as well. We're circling it around from one direction to the other. And one more, breathe it in. And then as we come up, pause and reverse direction. Drop down and up. Really keep those abs zipped up on this one and you wanna bend your knees quite a bit. So it's not just a bend forward, it's a squat with a little reach down to the ground. And with the breath, inhale as the body's long. Exhale as it's shortened. And one more. Come back up, stretch. And exhale the arms back down. So let's turn to whatever you determine is the top of your mat. Reach your hands down to the floor and push back to a downward facing dog. So strong shoulders are really important to a good down dog as well as flexible shoulders. So we'll work on moving through extension and flexion of the shoulders, but we'll do that first from the knees. So allow your knees to drop down onto the mat and come into a kneeling plank. So when I'm in kneeling plank, I want my hands exactly shoulders width apart because I build a really strong connection into the earth if my hand is right underneath my shoulder. If it's more back or more forward, it's not as strong, but directly down into a 90 degree movement here. And then drop your knees back behind you until you can lower your hips into a kneeling plank. From here, move your hips back into child's pose and think about what the anatomical position would be or the biomechanical name of this shoulder action and that's your flexion. So as we come forward to our kneeling plank, we're into extension of the shoulder, but it's not going behind us so we're not in hyperextension, just extension and flexion. And each time you come forward, I want you to feel strength in your shoulders and in your upper back as you come into that kneeling plank. Now notice where the creases of your elbows are. So the next time you come forward to plank, pause there for a moment, and the crease of the elbow is where it bends. I want the creases to be facing up towards the top of your mat. So you're just going to slightly corkscrew the insides of your elbows forward. Now do a little chaturanga. And when you do that, if you have your elbow creases in the right position, your elbows will go back towards your hips, not out to the side. So we really tuck them in. 
From here, push up to child's pose, shoulder flexion. Come into plank, shoulder extension, corkscrew the elbows forward, bend down into a chaturanga, push up. Back into child's pose. Now it's up to you how much you bend your elbows. You can make this a small one. What I'm going for is proper alignment and really strengthening through that shoulder joint. And we have one more repetition. Coming forward to kneeling plank, corkscrew the elbow creases forward, bend your elbows, push, and back to child's pose. For a moment, let's wrap our arms next to the sides of our body to give us a little bit of a relief for the shoulders here. So going through that same process one more time, you can stay on your knees or try the next level up, which would be from your toes. So taking the arms back out in front of you into that shoulder flexion, we can tuck our toes to lift the hips into down dog. So down dog should feel just like child's pose from your feet in terms of the extension of your arms out in front of you. So let's inhale, come forward into plank. Now you might notice if you look at the camera, my shoulders are not in the right position. So I'm going to walk them forward a little bit until I can get a really good plank. Shoulders over wrists. And then when I push up into down dog, I push back as hard as I can. And I'm not going to change the position of my hands or feet. Glide forward to plank. And push back to down dog. Now if this is too much for your wrists and shoulders, drop back down to the knees. If you're in that strength building phase here, and then the next time you come forward into plank, check your elbow creases, make sure they're facing forward, do a little elbow bend, push back up, and come into your down dog. Now sometimes when we're doing this, it's an intense movement. Our upper trapezius muscles, those ones that are in the upper back that descend down from the neck, they want to fire here, and you'll start to scrunch your shoulders up towards your ears. So really push shoulders down away from the ears. Make your neck nice and long as you do the strength building exercise. And one more repetition, either from the knees or toes. And then we'll all drop the knees down, pressing back to child's pose, sweep the arms next to the sides of your body so we relax through the shoulders. Also giving your wrists a chance to relax. So working again on that placement of the shoulders, we are going to come into a modified side plank and work on gate pose. So as you come back up, let's bring one knee forward. Let's do the right knee and I'll stay with your same side. Right knee comes forward and your ankle is going to go out to the edge of your mat here a little bit. Turn your left foot to the side and come into a kneeling side plank. And for now, I just want your fingertips to touch the mat, but try to notice, is your wrist in alignment with your elbow and your shoulder and the other shoulder and the other elbow and in the other wrist? Engage your core and pull your body up. Take a side bend towards the extended leg. Come back down to your side plank and just touch the fingers for now. Now this arm can also reach closer to your ear for a really nice maximal stretch. And we'll come back up, side bend, reach the fingertips down to the mat, and extend that top arm. Three more repetitions. This movement for the spine is so wonderful for building strength through the back muscles, the quadratus lumborum, and the obliques. And we've got one more pulling it up. 
And this time when you place that hand down onto the mat, let your entire hand connect and lift your long leg up off the mat. And we're going to reach through that heel. Top arm can also stretch over a nice side plank here. Now you can decide how much weight you want to take into this supporting shoulder. Your core is doing a lot of the work. And we'll hold here three breaths. Make sure that head is neutral. You can rotate your chin up. Two more breaths. Last one. And then just reach this top hand down to the mat. Top leg comes down and take a brief rest in child's pose, arms next to the sides of the body. And then we'll set up that other side. So from the hands and the knees, bring your left knee forward and kick your left ankle out to the side of the mat. Extend that opposite leg and just come up to your fingertips on the supporting arm. And then check, can you feel if you have everything stacked? Inhale, come up. Side bend. And then lower down, this top arm can reach closer to the ear. I really love this stretch right here. It's amazing how much different it feels if we extend that arm a little bit closer to the ear and that whole side body really opens up from the lats all the way down to the outside of that upper hip. Good. Make sure you're not bending forward. So sometimes I'll see this with my yogis, they're leaning over like this. So make sure everything is stacked. <sighs> Breathing. This will be our last repetition. And then we'll connect that hand all the way down to the floor, but not all of your body weight. Shift your body weight forward a little bit to keep this leg off the floor. Holding here or the arm can reach. Now just notice, are your shoulders stacked? Are your hips stacked? Breathe. You can flex that top foot and extend the leg nice and long. Gaze can look up to the fingertips. Let's hold here a couple more breaths. Strengthening that supporting shoulder. And then preparing to exit our pose, this top hand reaches down to the mat and we come back to our child's pose and reach the arms behind. So now we're going to work strengthening of our shoulders through um, dolphin pose. And dolphin pose is like downward dog, but we're from our elbows, which is a really nice modification if you're feeling some pain in your wrists. So the most important thing about dolphin, when we put our hands down onto the mat, we have this space between our elbows is the same distance as the space between our shoulders. So some common errors I see in dolphin is people want to expand the triangle. And so their hands are down on the mat and their elbows are really wide. Well, it takes this shoulder position and it makes it weaker because we want to get that elbow right underneath the shoulders. So come down onto your mat. Make sure your elbows are the same distance apart as your shoulders are. And then clasp your hands together and anchor your forearms really nicely down to the mat. Tuck your toes underneath. Pop those hips up. And then push away from your arms and really open up the armpits. Now a good way to check this and make sure you're doing it properly is if you look to the side, you should be looking underneath your armpit. If it's not correct, you're probably looking over the armpit and your arm is not extended out into that flexion enough. So dolphin push-ups. We are going to glide forward bringing the nose over the fists and then push back 
as far as you can, opening up those shoulders. So we're dropping into a plank, but notice my elbows do come behind my shoulders a little bit. But if I've got them shoulders width apart, this is a very safe position for the shoulders here. Now, if this is too intense, but you're like, Lisa, I really want to do this, but I'm not quite strong enough, then your knees come down and you come forward. Oh, much better. And push back. So the only thing it does when you come down to your knees is it shortens the lever and it takes a little bit more of the body weight out of your shoulders. You're still doing the movement and you're doing it well with all of the extra benefits that you have, just not quite as intense. Now this is a great exercise also for your triceps. So you might be feeling that in the upper arm. Let's do one more. And then hold your dolphin, either from your knees or your toes, looking underneath, making sure that position is great. Breathing. And then lower your knees back down to the mat, finding your child's pose, bring your arms next to the sides of the body. So that position in dolphin is a prep to get us strong enough to do headstands and forearm stands. So we're not going to actually do those today, but I'll show you a nice lead up. So we'll come back into our dolphin position. So dropping those elbows down onto the mat, shoulders width apart, interlace your hands, tuck your toes, lift your hips up into a nice dolphin, and then tiptoe your feet as close to your body as you can. So I'm walking, walking in, and then lift one leg up off of the mat. It's like a three-legged down dog from the elbows. Lower that one back down. Lift the other leg. Now my head is not touching the mat, so I want you to really stay lifted with nice long arms up and down. Just one more on the other leg, strengthening those shoulders and come down. Then we'll drop those knees and rest. Now, just because our bodies are are formed a little bit differently. There are some people who cannot do this because of the length of their arm, upper arm. So if you, if you say, I can't do this without my head touching, if you reach up and you go like this and you don't have enough room if it's touching your forehead, that probably means that your upper arm is too short in comparison to your head and from where your shoulders are. So if that's the case, don't worry about it. That movement's not for you. Okay, last plank we're going to work on is a reverse plank. So come to transition to seated and extend your legs out in front of you. I'd also like for you to have your yoga strap because we're going to combine this with um, a PNF technique, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitated technique to stretch your hamstrings. So the strap is there if you need it. Sitting up tall in Dandasana, staff pose. Fingertips are forward. Slide them behind you. What is this for shoulders? Hyperextension. So anything beyond neutral and back is hyperextension. Now slightly turn your fingers outward away from each other and come into rotation of the humerus. So you're gonna rotate back, open up your chest, keep your legs nice and straight, Pull your belly in. Now we are going to bend the right knee only. Set your foot down. And this right leg is going to help you come up into your plank. Left leg straight. Push your heel down into the mat and lift up. Then lower down until your seat hits the floor. Now I'm going into maximum shoulder hyperextension here. So the further I lift my hips up, the more my shoulders will come into hyperextension. So I want you to be sure this feels okay for you. Now as we come up, let's hold this last one. So you're staying up 
and I want you to dig your heel down into the floor, this left heel, the straight leg, like you're trying to push a hole down into the earth and you're firing the back of your left leg. Hold it, hold it, and you're breathing. Four, breathing three, breathing two, breathing one, and then lower your hips down. So what that did is it contracted the back of this left leg. So after contracting it, open your right knee out and let's stretch that same side hamstring. So using your yoga strap, toss it over the ball of the foot, pull in toward you and hinge forward into the stretch. So what that technique does, it's all this neuromuscular pathway where we suggested from our brain to our muscle that we're gonna tense that muscle for a few counts and then we're going to relax it and stretch. And for many of us, it's a great technique to get more length coming forward in your hamstring stretch. I've got a little timer across the room for me that I can watch and we're going to hold this another 40 seconds. Now we're also getting a nice hip opener here but if this leg is floating up too much and you want a little support for it, you can tuck your block right underneath that lifted knee. If you don't need your yoga strap, you can reach for the bottom of the foot and pull yourself down over that leg. And let's continue to breathe. We have 10 seconds. Time for one more breath, inhale, exhale as we release and come up. Okay, now our wrists have had a break as well and our shoulders have had a break so we can do this on the other side. So right leg straightens back out. We bring the fingertips behind us a little bit into shoulder hyperextension. Turn your fingers away from each other. Pull your shoulder blades together, lift your chest. Left knee bends to set the foot flat on the floor. Right leg is straight. Inhale, lift up into your reverse plank. Exhale, lower your seat back down to the floor. So I'm using the strength of my left leg being bent to help push up. My right leg straight to help push up. The hips are level. The core is pretty neutral. And let's hold one more right at the top. Now push your right leg down into the floor. Press, press, press. With a straight leg, feel your buttock tighten, your hamstrings tighten. Keep breathing, holding for four, holding three, holding two, holding one, and lower down. Great, allow this left knee to open out. I'm gonna place the block underneath it. Using the strap if you'd like, nice long spine. Bring it back behind the ball of the foot, give it a tug, and extend forward into your hamstring stretch. Good, we're holding one complete minute here in this stretch. With a beautiful flow of the breath, and fully mindful into this posture or pose or stretch, noticing where you're feeling the intensity. So doing that push down, then when you stretch, all of this should be nicely relaxed, but also be mindful that you're not tensing anything in this leg. Just completely let it go. Relax through the opposite hip. Soften through your lower back. A nice fluid breath, maybe an equal ratio breath. And we have 10 seconds to hold. One last breath in. And exhaling to rise up. Okay, what's better than one leg at a time? Both. So let's try it with both legs. 
So the choices I'm going to give you as we come into our position is you can keep both legs straight or you can bend both knees. So you might want to try one with the bent knee, lift up into this bridge or reverse plank and come down. If that felt okay and you want to try both legs straight, lift up and lower down. Just three more. We've moved our shoulders through hyper extension quite a bit. Stretching and strengthening. And two more. Now, if you can, hold the last one. And if you can, hold it with straight legs and push your heels down into the floor. Squeeze your buttocks. Tense the back of the legs, holding for four, and three, and two, and one. The hips come all the way back down, and then we take a forward fold one more time, either using our yoga strap or reaching our fingertips towards our feet. Pull back, elongate the spine and fold forward. One full minute stretching here. Really be mindful of relaxing. And not just the muscles that you're stretching, try to relax your face. Sometimes when we're holding something, we tend to clench our jaw or squint our eyes a little bit, or wrinkle our brow. So let that all be really relaxed. Can you sink a little deeper? And we have 10 seconds. One more breath. And rise back up to neutral. I have one more forward fold for you in the wide leg position. So turn lengthwise on your mat. Come to a nice comfortable straddle position. And then notice if you're in a natural state, are your knees facing up? Or do they roll in or do they roll out? Mine have more of a tendency of rolling out. It's very difficult for me to roll my knees forward, but I want you to try to find neutral. So you're not rolling out, you're not rolling in, but you're straight up and down. Now, if you're really tight here, you can take a couple of little towels and tuck them under your knees so you have some bend in your knees, but you have support. And let's inhale, stretch up. Exhale, reach forward. Now, there might be some of you that are really super tight, and even just sitting right here is very difficult. So if you're straight up, that's absolutely fine. Just lengthen that spine. You can also use a block, maybe to put your hands on at whatever height, or to set your forehead on. And just scan the backs of your legs. Does one feel tighter than the other? Is there any differences between right and left sides? Notice your lower back in your SI joint area on either the right or left side of the lower back. Is one side tighter than the other? And just in your mind, try to even out the sensation. Finding equilibrium from right to left sides. And we're going to hold this final forward fold just a little bit longer. 
more of a yin style pose. If you need a break or if your muscles start quivering or shaking, just give yourself a chance to come back up, relax. And then maybe when you fold over again, it's not quite as deep to find that complete relaxation. Sometimes we'll feel that we can go deeper after the first minute or so. So I have my block on its highest position. I'm going to try dropping it to medium and see if my forehead can find the block. And we'll hold here three more slow breaths, inhaling maybe a count of four or five. Exhaling that same duration or maybe a little bit longer on the exhale. And then we prepare to rise. So the head lifts, the hands walk in, and find a comfortable position for final relaxation. So you can lay onto your back for Shavasana, traditional Shavasana. If you've got a chair, you can do legs up a chair or legs up the wall, or just find a nice comfortable seated position for meditation. And when you find that comfortable place, if you're laying on your back, come into the anatomical position. So you would lay on the mat with your palms up next to the sides of your body, your feet slightly wider than hips distance, letting your toes roll out. Finding a beautiful neutral spine and just check in with your shoulders, noticing how they're feeling after our practice of sometimes a nice vigorous range of motion and strengthening today. Quite a bit of stability work for those shoulders. And then either if you're laying down on the mat or seated, just very slowly rotate your head from side to side. So if you're on the mat laying down, you're going to feel the back of your head connected to the mat. So you just roll it from side to side, slowly and comfortably. If you're seated, Maybe a little bit freer range of motion here through that neck rotation. And then let your head find balanced, neutral, right in the center. Now, if you'd like to remain in this state of relaxation for as long as you'd like, there's no hurry to come up from your position and exit the class. Remain as you are for as long as you'd like. If you're following the sound of my voice, I'd like to end class as we began. So take your time to come back to your feet, into our mountain pose, into that anatomical position. Rolling those shoulders open into that lateral rotation of the humerus. A gentle pinch between the shoulder blades. And our last movement, circumduction of the arms, will inhale, sweep them forward and up through flexion, 
opening out and back around through that hyperextended position, lowering back. Inhale. Exhale. And this time as we sweep them forward and up, press the palms together above the head. Tip your head back just a little bit to gaze up toward your thumbs. Maybe extend your spine back a little bit into that back bend. Bring your head back to neutral and lower the palms at heart center in our Anjali Mudra. It is here that we express our honor and our gratitude. And it is my honor to teach you today. And I am so grateful for all of you who have been along this journey with me. The light, the love, and peace that resides within me honors the light, the love, and peace in each of you. Namaste. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great week next week. If you can remain on and chat for a second, I would love to see how everything felt for you today. We'll get our recording to exit.